Hello, welcome. Uh, this is Alberto Marquez, and um, in this video, I am going to explain how to do the animation, build animations in Arena once you have already created a model. So first, let let me explain what I have as as a model. It's a, a single entity being created with uh, exponential time between arrivals. And then I declare the station, station one, that the entity um, is at at the beginning, and then leaves that station. And the way that we're leaving that station is by accessing a conveyor. And um, it's just one segment of that conveyor that takes it to uh, a processing station. And in this case, I didn't change the names of the station. They are they are what the, are offered as default from uh, the software and uh, the name, the convention name that it's offered is enter one station. So as it enters, it has to exit the conveyor and goes into a process. In this process, we use a resource named resource one and we use one of them. The, the service time is the default triangular distribution with mean of one and then leaves that station from uh, that particular station goes to the next station using transporters in this case transporter one and um, the next station it goes to is enter to station of course you have done this using uh, for more complex models using sequences but uh, uh, that that adds to the complexity but it's not what is needed here so uh, it, it goes from this station to the final this the final station which is enter to station where the transporter is freed and um, and then it's disposed of course when it left the previous station the processing station it had to request a transporter very good so this is the model that we're going to animate and um, we are probably going to have to do a couple of videos in order to complete all the animation but let's start um, first let's uh, go to the tab animate and you will see that you can animate cues and other uh, situations like C storage parking you can animate resources the entity the transporters the stations the routes the segment and the distances uh, to depict where the entities and transporters are going to go through so let's start with uh, something simple let's start with defining the stations so we need to bring the stations by clicking in station this will be station my station one this will be my station two or enter one station and um, and then I can actually repeat that station here after I um, include a, a resource and then this will be my final station so this region here is where i'm going to um, move uh, or represent the animation within the system so now i need to connect uh, well first i'm going to declare which stations are each one of these this one will be my station one this one will be enter one station this one will be also enter one station because the entity has not changed stations it's only been processed and um, finally it goes to enter two station and the way that we connect this is just uh, i'm sorry the segment because the segment is the one that relates to conveyor for the first one I have this interactive window so I connect 
the first two. And I can double click on that again in case I wanted to see that window. And it gives me a couple of things that I can use. For instance, I can use a different number of points. Uh, and having different number of points allows me to um, modify the look um, of the conveyor. Let's say that we use now six points. And six points will be created, the two extremes plus four others. And maybe now we can, uh, of course, you don't have to do this. This is just for teaching purposes. Now that's, that's my conveyor. For some reason it has to go in zigzag. And then uh, I'm going to do a, something equivalent, connecting now the distances between these two stations that are used. Also, I have the alternative to use points to depict the path. And the path can be highly unconventional, if you will. Um, we can have more points. And, um, okay, so did we have the name of the, of the segment? Not yet. We need to make it sure that it's the one that meets the name of the conveyor. In this case, the conveyor name that I'm using is conveyor one segment. And then the, for the distances, it's not distance one, but transporter one distance. In order to see what are the actual names, you can go to see the distance. And you see the name there, transporter one's distance. In order to see the name of the segment, conveyor one segment. So that has to be the one that you use. But you don't have to remember or even write it down because you can select here and it will be displayed as one of the options in the pull down menu. So it's very user friendly. And um, I think uh, probably this is good enough. Um, let's try. Let's try. Okay, so m maybe you can see the entity. Now oh, there you go. You can see the entity is, is going through the route. Not the route, but in this case the the conveyor. And that and none of them has gone through um, in order to request or have finished in order to request going to the. Well, I, we have not animated the 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 transporter yet because we need a transporter. That's why we're not seeing it. Let's see if we can animate the transporter because we have the distance, but we don't have the transporter. So. Um, Let's just finish this one here and uh, we'll continue the next one in the following video.